you very much. Uh, hello, I hope you can all uh, hear me. So, uh, yes, hello, uh, I'm Kate Smurfett, and, and first of all, uh, congratulations uh, on another anniversary and all the amazing stuff uh, that you guys are doing, and every time I come and there's more and more people here, and more and more people really enthusiastic about the work that you're doing, so give yourselves a round of applause. And uh, I think my main contribution uh, to this uh, sort of whole movement, really, uh, is going on the big questions and shouting at people. Um, that's, that's, not, that's, that's what I can do. Everyone can bring something, can't they? And uh, some people have, you know, swept up and some people have set the, the mics up and some people have sent out invitations and I've shouted at some people. Um, uh, and I was on there um, early this year um, with, um, with um, there was a discussion about humanism, about whether, because at the moment you can have a humanist wedding in Scotland but it's not legal in England, so we're having a discussion about that. And um, and, and, and Andrew from the BHA was there saying lovely things about humanism and rationality and all this kind of stuff. And I was sat next to this guy from an organisation called Discuss Jesus. <laughs> and he did not really want to discuss Jesus. <laughs> and he said, humanism is a first class ticket to sexual debauchery. <laughs> going for sexual debauchery, do go first class. <laughs> Don't get Ryanair to sexual debauchery, why would you? I mean, you know, um, it's, quite, it's quite an amazing show and actually funnily enough, uh, yesterday um, at their conference we were talking a little bit about, I mean I've been on, I've been on it loads of times but the most famous notorious um, is, is the, the episode I was on um, where we ended up talking about what heaven is like and, um, and, and there was an imam there and, and he said that in heaven um, there'll be three rivers, one of honey, one of olive oil, and one of wine. So, if you do need your celestial salad dressed, you know, it's gonna... And then he said that all the women would have long, well-conditioned hair. <laughs> I sort of feel bad for a deity who's sort of forgotten to, to deal with painful childhood illnesses and is worried about handing out the celestial timote, the sort of thing that priorities have not been appropriately sorted out. Um, but I think my favourite recent appearance um, I was on um, about a year ago and, um, and, and I was sat next to a woman who you might have heard of, she's a Daily Mail writer called Angela Epstein and um, I won't go into great detail about my views on the Daily Mail but I will say that my grandmother shortly before she died uh, turned around to me and said well I'm Church of England and I said, are you? Because I've never known you to go to church and I've never heard you express any religious sentiment, really. In fact, when they brought um, Church of England ministers to her nursing home, she told them to fuck off. <laughs> so I was like, when did you become Church of England? And she held up her copy of the Daily Mail and said, well, I am if the other choice is Muslim. <laughs> And you just, and it, just the amount of misrepresentation that is going on in that paper. Um, and, um, but Angela Epstein, she writes for the female section of the paper, so she sort of makes it her job uh, to try and make sure that there is no part of your body that a woman is not utterly disgusted by. Um, <laughs> she's, quite, she's quite a genius in her own way. And I was sat next to her, and, um, and the other side of me, there's a woman called Ruth, and I don't always agree with Ruth, but I think she's kind of fun. Um, she's a lesbian Church of England minister, and what I like about her is that she does get stuck into these debates. Uh, my favourite thing that she said on this episode, everyone was clamouring to get Nikki Campbell's attention, and she leapt to her feet and shouted, I'm a trained philosopher! <laughs> and you just have to be having such a middle class crisis <laughs> for that to be relevant. I like to imagine she's waited her whole life for that moment, you know. She's been like, is there a pilot on the plane? No, but I can explain that death is inevitable. <laughs> is there a doctor in the house? Yes, but of letters. <laughs> and then finally they're at some party and someone's like, quick! Jeremy's not sure why we're all here! She's like, yes! Stand back! I'm a trained philosopher! She runs in! The fourth emergency service! The metaphysical one! And um, Jeremy's in the corner, weeping. Oh, what's it all about? In the fetal position, sort of. She's like, get me 14 stanzas of Kant. Stat! Um, and anyway, she's kind of fun, even if I don't always agree with her. Um, but, um, but, but what happened was this, um, the night before we were on that show, uh, I was in a hotel in Salford and I woke up at four in the morning and my, my period had started and it hurt. And I took some Tramadol 
Um, and yes, some people with medical uh, expertise are giving me a look now. I am aware taking tramadol for period pain is like buttering your toast with a machete. Yes, I know, and I don't care because it works and it's fine. Um, so what happens, of course, is that I'm squashed between this Minister Ruth and this uh, and Angela Epstein, this horrible Daily Mail writer. And this minister, she just waving her arms around the whole time. She keeps elbowing me in the ribs and throwing me in to this Daily Mail writer, Angela Epstein, who sat there in this lovely fluffy jumper, this chenille jumper. And uh, what I wanted to say as I was thrown into Angela Epstein was, I hate you. And I hate every inch of you and every inch of the columns you write and your newspaper and the way you make people feel about themselves and especially the way you represent women and girls around the world and, and the messages you send out to them. But I don't know if you've ever written a bucket list. If you've ever written a bucket list, let me recommend in the strongest possible terms that you fish it out and add to that list the phrase, take opiates and rub against a chenille jumper. <laughs> It's really quite spectacular. Uh, so I think what I actually said on national television on that occasion was, will you please hold me? Um, but it was a very lovely experience nonetheless. And it brings me to the most recent appearance I made. And I've sort of already joked about the things that people said about humanism. Um, but I was also sat next to another woman on that show, uh, who some of you may have met. I, I, don't, I don't even know her surname. She, uh, she, she was on there under the name Amal, which is probably not her real name uh, in the circumstances. Um, and she was an ex-Muslim. And she was talking about... There we go, Amal Farah, that's who she is. Um, and so, and it was pretty, to be honest, it was a pretty traumatic episode. There was a lot of screaming and shouting. I did not enjoy it uh, as much as I sometimes do. And so afterwards, I turned to a couple of the other guests, including Amal, and I said, oh, let's go and have a coffee and, you know, kind of just chill for an hour and, uh, you know, chat through what happened. And then we were, we were just near the station, and there was a, a coffee shop right there, and then Amal said, oh, can we not go here? because it's too near the station and somebody might see me. And we went up the road to another coffee shop and then she said, actually, they might come around this way. Can we not sit here? And there was just this, this kind of real sadness that we couldn't just sit down and have a coffee because she, she, like so many people in this room, is one of these people who has to organise every aspect of her life to not be in the wrong place where she might get seen or she might get spotted in the same way that as we all came in, we all had to not know what the address was in advance. And it is, it is like... Uh, you know, being gay and not being able to come out. It is like having some secret that you cannot share and that you have to constantly be vigilant about hiding and about not telling the wrong person and not coming out in the wrong situation. And that sort of thing is, is an absolute burden. It's not, it's a completely non-trivial thing. It's, it's a really, really serious burden to carry around and it's so important uh, that, we, that we reach out to these people and let them know that there are safe places for them and that we are a part of that. And that's my not funny ending. Uh, to my otherwise quite funny uh, set for you. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. Uh,